the death toll resulting from the floods in Libya has reached over 11,000 and counting. Some reports say about 20,000 people may have been killed. But of course, here about 20,000 people, you know, of course, are also reported missing as workers continue to recover bodies. The United Nations World Meteorological Organization said most of the thousands of deaths could have been avoided. We're joined this morning by Dr. Mustafa Feturi, a Libyan academic and author. Good morning, um, Dr. Feturi. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Pleasure to be with you again. Yes, uh, we had a conversation a few days ago uh, in the wake of the very, very sad incident in Libya. Um, can you give us quick updates? Uh, the death toll, of course, has risen, you know, beyond what, you know, I even expected. Uh, can you share with us what the current figures, you know, are and, of course, what's going on over there? Well, I, I, I remember over, you know, two days ago when I talked to you, I, I, I gave you my predictions that the number of deaths could be anywhere between 15 and 20,000 people. Unfortunately, uh, some government sources are coming around reluctantly and indicating that uh, we, we have already reached uh, 11,000 or something around that, uh, around that figure. And uh, I, I also told you two days ago, and I repeat it again, that none of the uh, none of the uh, people in charge, neither in, inside the city itself, Derma, or at the government level, either either the governments, you know, we have two, as you know, either in Benghazi or in Tripoli, really have a precise picture of what is going on, and uh, especially when it comes to the number of the people. Uh, missing as well as uh, those who, who perished and uh, those who know something like you know a more relatively accurate picture if you like the, 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 the field the people in the field who are doing the rescue work and those people are working in a very chaotic situation they hardly document anything they have already been burying something like 2,000 plus people in mass graves and so uh, in the, the overall picture is, is, you know, that's emerging now is, is the fact that the number of deaths will be around the figures I just mentioned as well. And I could also uh, add uh, two points here. The number of, you know, people uh, uh, displaced from Derna, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from Derna, I, I don't think it will be beyond anything like 25, 30,000. Anything else will be something that needs more scrutiny. And I'm afraid, uh, I predict that the number of people who are missing and could be rescued, um, I, I think that number is diminishing by the day because disasters like this, when it's water or fire, it's quite, it's quite sometimes it's quite impossible. You need a miracle to find people who are still alive it's unlike earthquakes, you know, people are protected under falling structures. For example, in Morocco, they have just found some, some people alive uh, five days after the, the earthquake itself. With, 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 with torrential rains, with water like this, like in Derna, it's very unlikely. And I dispute, unfortunately, um, I, I read some figures yesterday that something like 500, some 540 people have been rescued alive after four days, I, I really dispute that figure because, as I explained it, you know, the, the, the calamity itself make it nearly impossible to have that figure, uh, that number of people rescued after so many days. All right. Um, so it's just really sad to see what's happening, that the predictions, it looks like the predictions are coming to pass. Uh, unfortunately, whilst there's a conversation about the, the dams that, were, that burst, there's also Storm Daniel. And I don't know what your thoughts are. Would you say that whilst we know all the other factors, do you think that climate change also did play a role in you know, the severity of this flooding? Well, it, uh, you know, climate change is certainly a factor. But, but, but in the particular case of the city of Derna, much of the deaths, much of the deaths and the structure could have been avoided, especially the deaths. Had we have the, the proper, uh, you know, warning to people, evacuation of certain areas, especially inside the city, the, the, the city itself, the uh, the meteorological office of, the, of of Libya failed miserably, as well as the the uh, the uh, the local government, uh, the mayor, his you know, uh, other 
you know, uh, members of the municipality council and 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 and, and, and Derna itself, they they completely have disappeared after the uh, after the uh, after the disaster struck, and we never heard of them and um, uh, anything from them. And the, the only people who are doing the talking now, especially in the local media here, are the ones who are doing the rescue work. But nobody is discussing what what really happened, and yet the the uh, the. Uh, the fact that uh, the, the the dams, you know, I, I explained two days ago to you uh, too that what happened with the dams, and uh, I, I just learned uh, yesterday. Uh, it's it's very uh, ironic situation. The the Turkish company that was contracted to uh, uh, renovate the, the bigger dam, the uh, the one called the Mumunsur Dam, which is the bigger one. Uh, with the capacity something like 22 billion, uh, million uh, cubic meters, it's still uh, even today on its website that says you know it says that it completed the work in 20, 2012, and uh, the contract was signed in 20, 20, uh, 2007 under the previous uh, Gaddafi regime. But th there is no way to to actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, uh, claim this, but but the Turkish company is still claiming it. We, we had the, the the prime minister in Tripoli, the second uh, the uh, the prime minister of the government of national unity in Tripoli yesterday came out and reluctantly recognized the fact and admitted that the millions of Libyan dinars uh, allocated for the for the uh, renovation and maintenance of that big dam, that especially dangerous one, uh, have been spent, but not on the dam, it's something else. So uh, you, 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 you have a kind of emerging picture that says too much about negligence, too much about uh, the way the, the bad way is handled, uh, too much lack of procedures for even what to do in a disaster, and far, far too much about corruption at the uh, government central level all the way to the municipal level unfortunately yes yeah. oh, well you know i have also seen um, the bbc and you know the foreign media organizations blame uh, the instability in libya you know as the reason for you know the, you know all of the you know the high number of deaths you know completely ignoring you know what happened in the arab spring and of course the bombing of libya uh, to, of course, uh, remove Gaddafi. Um, and, of course, not wanting to take any responsibility for, you know, where Libya is today. So um, can you quickly just, you know, speak on that? In one minute, please, we're out of time. Uh, speak on, you know, the, the reports, you know, from foreign media organizations um, blaming Libya for just being this very unstable place, you know, that has led to thousands, you know, dying in the flooding. No, Libya became very unstable because of the Western intervention, the military bombing of Libya by NATO in uh, 2011, 13 years ago, 12 years ago. That was the specific, the, the main reason for everything. I would also, uh, I would also add that the NATO bombardment of the country for eight months in 2011 to uh, to uh, to the Bosch Gaddafi uh, is is a factor. And every uh, major disaster we have seen in the country ever since. So you, you cannot, you cannot just say Libya has been one of the before 2011, the so-called Arab Spring, which is a criminal most of it in Libya. You know, before that, Libya was one of the most stable and safest countries in Africa, and with the potentials for growth and the, the uh, as as uh, testified to by the. Uh, United Nations figures, you know, especially the human rights, uh, 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 the the Human Development Index, it's one of the best and a leading country in Africa in terms of stability and security. What happened afterwards in 2011? That is one of the main reasons for every illness we see in the country today. You cannot just say, well, it has been, you know, chronical, a chronically unstable place like Somalia or something else. That's not true. I would strongly oppose that point of view. And I will have evidence from our daily lives in Libya over the last 12 years to support my claims. All right. I mean, I, I, I wonder, another thing, you know, would be, I wonder if there would be 
people who will take accountability. You mentioned how the meteorological agency has also failed because they did not, of course, inform people about the potential disaster that was looming and that could have saved thousands of lives. I wonder if they'll be held to account now that you said they've all gone quiet. I wonder if they'll be made well, to answer. That, that, yeah, we, we have promises from both uh, governments, you know, the one in the East and the one in the Western Tripoli here. We have promises that there will be investigation and so on and so forth. But, you know, going by brief ex experiences of such situations, you know, lesser, uh, at the lesser scale, I don't think I don't think there will be any serious investigation. And the the attorney general of the country, uh, Mr. Sewer, who is based in Tripoli, uh, left yesterday to go and visit after four days after the fact, after the disaster, to visit uh, the, the affected areas, especially Derna. And he is yet to announce that he's taking up any measures in terms of uh, accountability. Accountability itself, the word has been out, you know, it has never been used in the lexicon of the, of the, uh, of the, or the dictionary, if you like, of the uh, political elite uh, for the last 12 years. Nobody has ever been held accountable for such, uh, such a major. Uh, I mean, we have to interject at this point. And crimes. Unfortunately, I mean, we've run out of time, but yeah, like you've mentioned, we do need accountability. And we hope that we, when we have you join us again, True. we would see moves being made in that regard. Thank you so much for your time with us this morning. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right.